Hello everyone, so in today's video we are going to be uh, doing a sort of an overview of the series pass voltage regulator typology. Uh, in a previous video, way back, I think I'm going to link it up here in the card, we did, uh, took a look at uh, shunt regulators for the handphone amplifier project. We went from this simple Zener regulator all the way to a buffered Zener and all that good stuff. But this time we're going to be looking at the humble and uh, used almost everywhere series pass voltage regulator. These devices are very simple. They are just your uh, regular, let's say, uh, for example, here a uh, 7805 or your LM317s. Okay. Now they are pretty simple. Okay. So we're going to be building a uh, high voltage power supply here in this channel. And for that, we're going to be uh, designing our own series pass regulator. Because you just can't go out and buy a, a 400 volt capable uh, LM317. Actually, you can, but those are pretty expensive. They are specialized. Uh, and this way, I just uh, we will have to do something discreet here to handle all those voltages and uh, do something that uh, <laughs> we can all learn. Okay, because if you just grab some sort of a uh, adjustable high voltage regulator from uh, the Jiki or Fresnel then we'll be learning absolutely nothing and uh, we also wouldn't be able to uh, um, control it with a low voltage which is my uh, goal here I want to have a low voltage control of a high voltage supply so that's already uh, out of question here so let's uh, uh, take a quick look at how a, uh, a series regulator works. We are going to be doing low voltages here. So this is just a, a, an overview so that you understand the building blocks and understand how these uh, types of devices work so that you can build your own, you can implement them in your, in your project. So it's going to be a pretty uh, generic, uh, very uh, broad uh, information. And you can then just adjust it for high voltages if you want, which is what we are going to be doing. And uh, later on in the video, after we discuss a bit, uh, just like we did in the shunt regulator, we're going to start with something very simple and then uh, go on from there. Now in the end, we are actually going to look at uh, how a, uh, an LM317 and a 7805 actually works inside. Okay, so let's jump right in. So um, just like we did before, in the uh, shunt voltage regulator video, we're going to start with it, the humble uh, Zener, okay? Zener diode. Uh, it's not a series regulator, okay? But it is the basis of basically every regulator that you can imagine. So if you want to have a, uh, oh, again, just like we did in the uh, shunt regulator series, <laughs> not shunt regulator series, the shunt regulator video, uh, we're not going to be uh, adding decoupling capacitors so you just have to figure that out <laughs> where to put them usually in the output and inputs okay so this is your uh, usual uh, Zener stabilized uh, voltage regulator this is a shunt regulator not a series pass but hey this is the simplest form of voltage regulation let me just uh, put a, uh, an X on it just to remind you that it is not a series, it's a shunt. But with this, independent of the voltage, you get a uh, sort of, in case of the Zener, stable output here with a set voltage. Okay. Now we are going to be using this as the basis for the other regulators that we are going to be uh, discussing here. Now, the uh, simplest form of a series uh, pass regulator is a buffered zener. The buffered zener can be done in a shunt topology, as we've done previously, or it can be done in the series pass. In the series pass, it's pretty simple. Okay. So this is it. It's just uh, a, a transistor, an NPN transistor, buffering 
the output of the Zener volt. So basically all that we've done here is just added a NNPN transistor here as an emitter follower. Okay, and what's going to happen here is very simple. This is just going to buffer the current so that we can supply a higher current here in the output than the Zener could previously. So let's say that this is a, a 5 volt Zener, okay? So if this is a 5 volt Zener, we'll have uh, around uh, 5 volts here at the base. And since we have that uh, uh, VB drop here, that uh, forward voltage between the base and the emitter, as is common in an emitter follower, here in the output we'll have the 5 volts minus the 0. Uh, let's say 0. 0.6 volts of that uh, VBE, which means we will have around like 4.4 uh, volts here at the output. Okay. Now, when you do something like this, you always got to keep in mind that you need some current here flowing through the uh, um, zener. Let's say we want uh, 3 milliamps. Uh, let's say that uh, this here is at uh, 9 volts. Okay. Now, if we put a, a, a 1K resistor here, that would give us just uh, the 9 volts minus the uh, 5 volts here uh, divided by that 1k, so Ohm's law, is going to give us around a uh, 3 milliamps flowing through uh, this uh, zener. But you got to keep in mind that as soon as you start drawing some current here in the output, the space is going to consume some sort of current, which is going to uh, divert that current that should be flowing through your zener. And the problem with that is as soon as the volt, the current flowing through the zener changes, so does its uh, forward voltage, which is really bad, which is going to uh, throw off our output here. So uh, one way to mitigate that is to use a Darlington pair here. And if you use a Darlington pair, then you're going to have uh, two uh, VBEs. So this <laughs> uh, voltage here is going to drop by another uh, 0.6 volts. But the current here through the zener is just basically going to uh, stay constant no matter your output current. And that's just going to make the whole thing a lot more stable. Okay, So that's pretty simple. You can just, if you need more current, you just uh, put a, a Darlington pair. Okay. So this is pretty simple, but the, the biggest problem with uh, this topology is that it's not adjustable. The only way to adjust it is to change the center uh, a diode here. So in this case, that's why you get those uh, center diodes with all the weird voltages like uh, 5.6 volts, uh, 5.4 and all that. It's just so that you can uh, have a, an output here that is basically at a, a common voltage that you might uh, expect for example if so let's say you wanted to have a uh, 5 volts here all you had to do was to uh, uh, pick a 5.6 volt zener and then you would just have a 5.6 volts here and a 1 vb drop here and a 5 volts output same thing for 12 volts whatever for example if you wanted 12 volts with a lot of with a lot of current uh, passing through this uh, pass element here. This is a, called a, the transistor in the uh, Volta regulator like this, called a pass element. Um, then you would put a Darlington here and you would select uh, a 13.2 volts enter so that you have those two VBEs here to get a stable 12 volts output here with a lot of current behind it. So this is pretty simple. It's not adjustable. It has a lot of drawbacks, but it works and it is what it is. Okay, it's extremely simple and uh, extremely functional. Now, let's just uh, uh, move a bit away from this and design something that is simple, that is discrete, and that uh, is actually adjustable. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Now, one way to make this adjustable is simply add some negative feedback. And uh, we can do that with a single transistor, just adding the single transistor to this uh, topology right here of the buffered zener. So let's take a look at uh, how that would work.
So here it is. Now, how does this thing work? Okay. Uh, by the way, just like in the uh, shunt regulator video, uh, this center you can change it for any sort of a voltage reference. It can be a uh, <laughs> as complex as like for example a TL431. It can be a diode, a center diode. It can be a uh, Schottky diode if you really want to, an LED, whatever sort of thing that you can put here. Uh, whenever I draw a, a Zener diode, it's a reference, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, the way that this works is very simple. Um, first of all, uh, let's say that, uh, let's, let's think of this as, a, a, for example, one volt, okay? A one volt Zener. So if uh, this circuit is just powering on, this resistor here, going to start uh, raising the value the voltage here at the base of this transistor the pass element this uh, by the way this part of the circuit is going to be turned off so this can be feeding some uh, current here and this voltage will start to rise and as soon as that, that voltage uh, crosses through that um, VB uh, uh, voltage point then this transistor start to conduct and it will a voltage will start to appear here at the output since this is basically just an emitter follower and, uh, whenever that voltage reaches a certain threshold this part of the circuit should start to turn on and what, what threshold is that so let's for the sake of simplicity here so let's just go with the same uh, uh, arrangement that we had here so let's say that we have a 5 volts here so here at the uh, since we have 5 volts here uh, no matter what uh, voltage we put here at the uh, uh, base will always have that 5 volts here so not always uh, this transistor will have to start turning on for that if it's off there is no 5 volts here so this base will always be at a 6.5 volts so let's say if we omit this resistor here so this point right here will always be at that uh, 6.5 volts because it has to um to power that uh, 5 volt zener so we have just a vbe here so what's going to happen is this transistor will start to turn on the voltage here will start to rise and as soon as that voltage rises to a point where this voltage divided here uh, has 5.6 volts here at its output then this transistor will turn on and it will start to shunt some of that current that was going through the base of this transistor and pass it through the zener diode and goes to ground Okay, so this is self-regulating and it's using a negative feedback to set the voltage output here because the voltage output here is just a, uh, 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 a direct relationship to this uh, resistive divider that always has a 5.6 volts at its output. Okay, that's pretty simple. But one thing that you got to keep in mind is that the current through this uh, zener is always going to be changing because uh, we are not having no we don't have a, a constant uh, current flowing through it we are just shunting some of that current that should be going to the base of this transistor through it so again this doesn't have very good uh, regulation as soon as it starts to draw some current from it then more current will have to be diverted from uh, uh, this part to the uh, base of this transistor what will start to happen this will uh, start to get less current and the voltage of this zener will rise okay which leads to a high voltage here in the output and <laughs> all that so keep that in mind as always now the way to calculate this is very simple okay. the uh, let me put it here so your v out will be the uh, v ref okay plus the the vb off this transistor here all this times I'll have to uh, go down here all this times 1 plus R1 over R2 okay very simple let me just uh, label this so R1 and R2 okay so this is a uh, pretty simple stuff okay you just set these resistors according to this formula, uh, having the uh, reference I know here and your uh, known VBE, giving your current that's going to be flowing through this. 
and then you get your V out. Pretty simple stuff. You can also just uh, deduce this formula without uh, uh, having it. It's very simple. You just get the uh, um, resistive divider formula and you just substitute the output of the resistive voltage divider by uh, 5.6 volts or in this case here, you know, the VB plus the uh, VRAF and you get, you know, and you plug in your out desired output voltage, choose uh, one of the uh, values of these resistors and uh, then you just plug those values in and you get the value of the other resistor. It's pretty simple. Uh, this circuit again has a very poor regulation. There is a lot of stuff that you can do to improve it just like here You can decouple it at this node. You should decouple this as well. You should also this decouple the uh, Voltage here at the uh, output of the voltage divider if you want uh, to um, Learn more about this you can just uh, take a look at the uh, first of all the shunt regulator video where I go through some of a uh, this theory and you should also take a look at the uh, uh, final circuit of the uh, shunt regulator that we used in the uh, headphone amplifier series um, seeing if I have the uh, yes I have it here so we built uh, this little thing and uh, I did a bunch of, uh, of uh, experiments with it and uh, we decided uh, to go with this for the uh, uh, final design of the amplifier but uh in that video i talk a lot about uh, the decoupling and what i did and all that stuff is just easily applied uh, in this circuit as well so all that information is also valid here that's why you have a, a thousand uh, microfarad capacitor here this is not decoupling the uh, input or the output it is in parallel with the uh, voltage reference okay so uh, that's just to keep all the uh, uh, low frequencies from uh, messing around with this uh, reference, okay? So this is pretty simple. It's a perfectly valid approach to a uh, voltage regulator. This really works and you will see this a lot, especially in uh, older gear. This was very common back in the day. And uh, it's still a bit common today, not as much as before because of the advent of things like the LM317 and all those ICs becoming extremely cheap, cheap. but this is still a good circuit to know about. Okay? And, uh, you can uh, easily design this into any project that you have, but just keep in mind it doesn't have very good regulation and all that stuff. Okay. Now, uh, one of the ways that we can improve this well, greatly, by the way, is to use an op amp. So that's what we are going to be looking uh, right in a moment, okay? So to improve this even further, all we have to do is to add an op amp to the mix, okay? So let's do just that. So, now we have uh, changed this up and all we have here is very simple. We just have a, a buffered op amp. We're just buffering the uh, output of the op amp with an NPN transistor. So we have our voltage reference here again to uh, keep this thing consistent. Let's say we have a, a five volt zener here. No. And let's put this as a, let's say 1K, okay. So we're going to have uh, five volts coming into the uh, non-inverting input of an op amp. I didn't, I haven't discussed uh, op amps here in any of the previous videos. Uh, if you want to do so, I can do it in the, uh, a uh, later video. Uh, but we are going to be using op amps in our um, uh, uh, high voltage uh, supply build and in that case I'm going to be building a discrete op amp Not going to be using an IC so because hey uh, high voltage op amps that can handle 400 volts uh, Is not uh, they are not very common. Okay, 
So I'll have to roll my own, and uh, maybe I'll uh, talk a bit more about how uh, discrete op amps work. But I really want to do an in-depth video on discrete op amps later when we build, let's say, for example, a, a class AV amplifier. I think that's going to be a more uh, appropriate. But I may touch into the subject briefly just to explain the uh, um, high voltage supply circuit. Okay, but. Uh, anyway, uh, the thing that you gotta understand is that uh, an op amp will do whatever you can here in the output to make its two inputs the same. Okay, so it will want to see if the, it sees, uh, let's say, five volts here. Uh, it will try to do whatever it can here in its output to make sure that this input here is also at that five volts. And we have a voltage divider here in the output, just like we did before with negative given this whole circuit some negative feedback and what happens here is that whenever this voltage here uh, reaches a voltage that uh, this node here reaches a voltage where the output of this voltage divider is outputting uh, 5 volts then the circuit will be stable and will be regulating at that point now this is very simple this is just typical uh, up in circuitry all it's doing is just amplifying the voltage of this reference here at the output, okay? Always keep in mind that all these circuits, they have limitations, uh, mainly the fact that uh, this circuit uh, can't have a voltage uh, here greater than uh, that uh, VB drop, uh, but you don't want to be there because at that point you're not regulating. Same thing here, but here it's even worse because... Uh, you, you've got an op amp, and op amps have uh, voltage limitations of its output, so okay, keep that in mind. So uh, this is a very simple, very self-explanatory. As soon as you put an op amp in the circuit, things get uh, really easy to understand, in my opinion. So this is just uh, if you want to know the V output is just your typical op amp uh, gain formula. You would have a uh, in this case a V ref, okay times 1 plus R1 over R2. So there is your formula for this one. Very simple stuff again, okay? So we've covered uh, most of the um, common topologies that you see <laughs> almost everywhere, okay? Uh, if you see a, a series pass regulator, it's going to be one of these three, okay? There's just nowhere to go. <laughs> Uh, whenever you see something, uh, the only thing that can change, for example, this is an LEO, where you have a, a PNP transistor here, or sometimes a uh, some kind of FAT. So that's just the only difference. But the whole theory and basically the whole uh, layout and topology will continue to stay the same. Okay, so what we learned here is very important. Now, uh, one thing that I want to do, let's take a look at some data sheets of uh, some uh, classics in terms of uh, voltage regulators, uh, voltage regulator ICs. And uh, let's discuss a bit and see how this uh, uh, theory that we've been through actually works in practice, okay? So let's take a look at those data sheets. So let's begin with the uh, venerable uh, 7805 regulator. Uh, if you've been around uh, any sort of uh, electronic project, you most likely have used uh, a regulator for, from the uh, 7800 uh, family, okay? They are very uh, robust, they are very simple, and they are very cheap. So they are used a lot on every sort of project, okay? I've used countless ones of these. Uh, and in this case, they are fixed, so they are not um, uh, adjustable. Like these two, they are more akin to something like this. But you get them in a, a variety of... Um, Standard, <laughs> standardized voltages. And if you go uh, to uh, uh, page 12 of its uh, data sheet, you get the uh, block diagram, the actual circuit that is inside of the IC. Okay. By the way, uh, unfortunately, uh, TI apparently uses A5 for their uh, data sheet, so uh, it didn't scale out. Okay. So it's small like this. I'm going to uh, zoom in so that uh, we can read something, okay? Now, now that uh, this is uh, slightly more readable, sorry, I, I just can't zoom anymore. 
let's uh, identify some things in here. As soon as you see this, it looks <laughs> extremely daunting. <laughs> okay, that's for sure. It it looks foreign. It looks like something that we can never decipher. But just like we did before with the amplifier series, it's all about identifying building blocks. I haven't touched into the subject of a discrete op amp, so uh, you won't be able to quickly uh, identify a discrete op amp here. But hey, let's go step by step. The first thing that you gotta identify is right here. This is the reference. Okay, this is your regular reference that we've been seeing throughout this video. Okay, and all that it is is just a buffered zener. Okay. If you see here, R1, D1, and Q12, it's literally just this. You just have uh, your V plus going through a resistor, through your Zener diode, going to ground in here. What you have is you tap off a um, emitter follower. Okay, pretty simple stuff. You can see here. So this is going to be uh, your R1, this is D1, and this is Q12. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Now, um, if you look at this uh, and you know about discrete op amps, the first thing that you will, uh, your eyes are going to land on is this thing right here. This is a long tail pair, and uh, it's pretty. Uh, um, it's the heart of any. Uh, op amp and one thing that we can identify pretty quickly is that this is the non-inverting uh, input of the op amp and this is the inverting input because we have a, a voltage uh, divider here a resistive divider feedback network so this is going to be the uh, non-inverting and this is going to be the inverting inputs okay so that's the second building block that we have uh, encountered now let me uh, do this. So this is your uh, feedback network. So this is going to be amplifying the voltage of this reference. Okay. And you can see in here your pass element. In this case, it's just a Darlington. So this is the pass element. Pretty simple, just a Darlington. It's uh, going from the uh, output of the op amp to it. And uh, so, simple stuff. Now, as soon as we see this, we can start to uh, uh, draw a little um, schematic of this uh, regulator. It's going to be very simple. All that it's going to be, I won't even have to draw it. Okay, I'm not going to do this to you. It's just this it's literally this okay so this is d1 here this is r1 of course it's buffered so you have a uh, uh, a transistor here then you have your op amp okay so your reference it's going to the um positive and uh, not positive sorry yeah non-inverting input of the op amp and then you have a feedback network right here going through to the non-inverting input of this op amp. And then you've got your pass element here. So pretty simple stuff, okay? So this is just amplifying this reference right here, okay? So it's uh, pretty apparent that what we've just done here, it's used everywhere, <laughs> as I've told you. And one thing here in the circuit that I briefly want to mention is the fact that we have a current limiter here, which is a uh, very good building block to use on anything that you might be designing that involves higher currents. Okay, so this can be used in the output of amplifiers or power amplifiers or voltage regulators. And uh, what it's done, what it's doing is very interesting. So let's, uh, let's just draw something like this. Okay, so let's say that uh, we have a uh, transistor like this 
wired up as an emitter follower as it is in a power amplifier or a voltage regulator. Okay, so there is a, an, an input voltage here. Okay. Then you tap it off like this. You put a low value resistor. And this actually goes to the uh, to your output. Okay. And then what you do is you tap this node right here. You put another NPN transistor like this. You tie it to here and you tie this point down here. And what you have here is a built-in discrete, very simple, very minimalistic current limiter. Okay. So what we do here is since the uh, base of this transistor is here and the emitter is here, um, all the transistor needs to turn on is so that is that its a VB voltage appears here at its base. So if this the voltage across this resistor here is equal or greater than let's say a uh, uh, 0 0.65 volts, this transistor start to turn on and it will shunt the current from the base of this transistor right here, your pass element. Doing that, it will reduce the voltage here at this node, which will in turn reduce the voltage here at the output. Uh, and your load is going to draw uh, less current from that, okay, because of the uh, Theoretically, your load is going to draw less current from that because uh, its voltage, the voltage across it, has dropped, and then it's going to reach uh, the equi equilibrium of uh, current. If you short this uh, this output out, all that you're going to get is that 0 0.65 volts here. Okay. So again, pretty simple stuff, but it works wonders. So all that you have to do is pick a resistor here that when it's passing uh, an overload current, this is not, for example, if this uh, uh, stage here has to provide one amp to your load, you won't calculate this resistor for one amp because it's going to start to turn on this transistor uh, much earlier than that. So you, for example, pick uh, so that uh, this is going to be a, this, uh, this is going to be a dropping uh, 650 millivolts when it's drawing, uh, for example, 1.5 amps. So that's just going to limit the whole thing to 1.5 amps. Okay, So pretty nice. So it has built in current limiting, because it's really, <laughs> really uh, cheap and simple to do something like this. And this circuit is used on literally every power amp and every uh, voltage regulator out there. Okay, so this is a pretty uh, nifty circuit. So now, let's take a look at a uh, different voltage regulator, an IC. Now if we look at the uh, LM317 Classic, it's an adjustable voltage regulator, just like we want here. And uh, unlike its fixed counterpart, at page 9 they have a, uh, a real block diagram, which makes things a lot easier to explain. So uh, the only difference here is that uh, instead of having uh, uh, the uh, the op amp being referenced, its ground reference being referenced to actual ground. Since they wanted to keep the uh, uh, three pin regulator design, then its its uh, negative uh, uh, reference goes to the output. So uh, things are a bit different. Uh, instead, here you actually have your op amp uh, reference to ground. Okay. Now. In here, what we have again is the same thing we had before. The only difference is that uh, weird reference, uh, uh, the, that weird uh, grounding design. Okay, but it works just the same. Okay, so you put a uh, feedback network here, and it's going to amplify this 1.25 volts here at its output. Again, pretty simple stuff and stuff that we've seen before. So again, that just confirms our uh, idea that uh, this sort of stuff is used everywhere. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief overview of the uh, series pass voltage regulators. This was pretty simple stuff. They are not very difficult to understand how they work, and they are, in my opinion, easier than the shunt regulator. 
because uh, this is literally just an emitter follower. Okay, it's just an adjustable type of emitter follower. And uh, this way, we've uh, went through the uh, buffer zener. We went to a, a very simple, discrete uh, regulator, adjustable regulator, and went with an uh, open base uh, regulator. And hey, now we have at least the basics, the basis to uh, understand this sort of circuit and to go to the next level. Okay, so in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be um, explaining much more in depth about these circuits, and we are going to actually be designing a, uh, a the high voltage regulator. Now, we're going to talk more about that uh, current limiting. How can you implement, for example, current limiting in a design as simple as this? And uh, yeah, I hope you like the series. I hope you follow along. Now, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Any sort of feedback, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, hey, I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, I really hope that we I see you in the next one, right? So, yeah, that was it. Thanks for watching. And bye.